Welcome to Bookmas Day 6. Merry Bookmas! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oshale here and this is Oshi Reads. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top 18 books I want to read in 2018. The first 10 I'm going to be talking about are physical books that I already own and that are on my shelves that I just haven't had a chance to get to yet. And the last 8 books will be books that I do not own yet and that I'm very much looking forward to purchasing and adding to my collection as well as reading in 2018. The first two books I have to share with you are books that I picked up recently at a local bookshop not too far from me. The first book is actually a book I read years ago and I believe I have read this book a handful of times when I was younger and I haven't read it since and I really want to get back into this world and this story. And this is Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. This is a book I loved, like I said, when I was younger, around like early high school age and I read it a few times. I believe I read it one time through, oh gosh, actually I think I read this when I was even younger than high school. My dad gave me this book to read when I was, I want to say, in middle school. Yeah, I think in middle school, uh, early preteen years, and then I read it again in high school and I haven't read it since and I really want to read this again. Song of Solomon is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature and it is well deserved. I remember this book being such a transformative experience for me and it really impacted me as a young reader. From what I remember, the novel has a lot of magical realism and it follows a young boy as he struggles to come of age in a time that is not too kind to people of his origins and background as he is a young black man just trying to make it. This is the novel that really put me on to Toni Morrison's work and really got me intrigued about her as a writer and has continued to impact me to this day even though I can barely remember the story. So that's why I really want to go back into it and rediscover this. So I'm super excited to get to this in 2018. The next book I have to show is a book I have been intrigued about for years and this is The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. This is a Man Booker Prize winner so I have heard nothing but rave things about this novel. Rave. Like people are obsessed with this book. So in this novel we follow a Japanese prisoner of war, I believe his name is Dorigo Evans, and we follow him through his journey from the prisoner of war camp in Japan to modern-day Australia, I believe. It chronicles Dorigo's experiences, his fellow prisoners, and those of the Japanese guards. I can already tell that this is going to be a deeply moving and emotional read and I cannot wait. The next book I want to show you is a book that I purchased a while ago at the book outlet, at the book outlet, <laughs> from book outlet, and this is The Gollum and the Genie. Right on the back here it says it combines the narrative magic of the Arabian Nights with a kind of emotional depth, philosophical seriousness, and good old-fashioned storytelling found in the stories of Isaac Bashiva Singer. I don't know who that is, but sounds good. So it looks like this story combines fantasy and historical fiction. It tells a story of a golem, a genie, and basically they're both struggling to find their way in 1899 New York as I can imagine one does when you are a golem and a genie. So they're trying to map their true identities and they're trying to blend in with their immigrant neighbors and they become unlikely friends. Ooh, they face lots of challenges and basically there's something after them and it's trying to drive them back into their separate worlds. So it sounds like a survival story, a story of friendship and a story of history. Like we get to explore 1899 New York, whatever that's like, especially through the eyes of two fantastical magical creatures and it seems like there is something hanging over their heads, like maybe something is coming after them. So it should be interesting. I'm definitely ready to get into a magical, historical, fantastical world. Along the same fantasy and magical world is Grimm's Fairy Tales. I have been wanting to read this for a while. These are basically the fairy tales told by the Brothers Grimm. This particular edition has illustrations in it and it's a very beautiful edition. I haven't had a chance to really read it since I bought it a few years ago so I'm looking forward to really exploring this. I love fairy tales so I finally just want to get my hands on this. So some Grimm's fairy tales are Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin, Cinderella, The Fox and the Horse, Little Red Riding Hood, The Golden Goose, and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So there's a ton in here but I just wanted to pick the standouts that Disney has swiped up and turned into their little magical gumdrop fairy goodness. These are a little bit darker. <laughs> 
so I can't wait to read the original versions. Next up here on my list is a non-fiction pick. And this is Acting White, The Curious History of a Racial Slur by Ron Christie. Now this is a book I purchased way back when in 2014 and I have not had a chance to read it yet. I'm very, 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 very curious to see how this is going to go. So right above the title, which is all bolded, it says Barack Obama Keynote Address 2004 Democratic National Convention. These are his words. We must eradicate the slander that says a black youth with a book is acting white. So this should be interesting indeed. And I cannot wait to go back to the history of this racial slur and what it really means and how it's been used and the consequences of it. I am so excited to see where this read is going to take me. Next up, I have more nonfiction for you guys. And these two books, one of them I've read before, I want to reread and then I want to move on to the other two. Um, the first one that I've read before is Blink. I hate when I hold this up because you guys literally cannot see anything. This is Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. So I've talked about this book before here on this channel. I will link all these books below, by the way. But Malcolm Gladwell writes a lot of, I want to say, psychological type books. He really delves into the way people think and the way the brain works and why we come to certain thoughts and conclusions that we do, why we do things that we do, stuff like that. So I really enjoy his writing and the way that he is very straightforward with his findings. He puts a lot of research into what he does, which I respect. So I want to reread Blink. I recommend it to everyone. I also want to move on and read his other two books. This one is David and Goliath, Underdogs, Misfits, and the Art of Battling Giants. And then he also has another book, which I don't have here, which is The Tipping Point, um, and then another book, Outliers. So for now, I just want to focus on rereading Blink, reading David Goliath, David and Goliath, and then reading The Tipping Point. Outliers I do not own, but all the rest of them I do. Moving right along in the nonfiction vein is a little bit more spiritual depth here on this channel. I want to make my way through my Bible. Um, I've always tried to read my Bible in a year and I haven't always succeeded. So this year I definitely want to make that a, this year, it's not 2018 yet. In 2018, I definitely want to make that a goal. And along with that, I have a devotional here that is a very popular devotional called Jesus Calling, Enjoying Peace in His Presence by Sarah Young. This is devotions for every day of the year. It starts in January. Uh, I bought this a almost a year ago maybe a year ago now and i've been waiting to start it in january because i want to do it january through december and when i purchased this it was like three or four months into the year already so i just wanted to wait so basically the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to read one devotion every day with the corresponding bible verse and then i'm also going to be going through a plan i have the bible app on my phone and they have numerous plans on there and they have a plan for reading the Bible in the year. So I'm going to be doing that in conjunction with the devotional. And this Bible is the Message Remix. So the Message Bible basically is the Bible in everyday English. That's why the Message is currently my favorite translation. There are others that I enjoy, but I really enjoy the Message. So I have chosen this Bible to make my way through in a year. We'll see how it goes. Let me know if you want me to talk about it here on this channel. I'll be more than happy to do so. Now moving on to the books that I do not own. The first one I want to talk about is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Maybe it's Kazuo Ishiguro. I, oh, I'm so bad at name pronunciations. But I read this my freshman year of high school and I remember being really moved by this novel and so this is a reread. I haven't read it since but I remember it really impacted me in a very deep way. He actually just won the Pulitzer for literature so I definitely want to kind of get my way into his works and the first thing I want to do is reread this book that kind of started it all for me in terms of really critically reading books and um, I remember it was my honors English class in I think it was ninth grade or 10th grade that we read this book and it just uh, changed my life in a way that opened me up to just a different side of reading. You know, we do all that critical reading stuff in high school and that was kind of the beginning for me. So I want to go back and I want to reread that and then maybe pick up some of his other books. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get to that and to have a copy here on my shelf. 
Up on the list is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. And for this one, I wanted to add some poetry on there. I have read bits and pieces of this particular uh, poetry collection over the years, ever since I was a kid. You know, it's a very, very famous book and collection of poems and short stories, I think, or maybe it's just poems, I can't quite remember. And I've always admired Mar Maya Angelou and just who she was and what she stood for and how amazing she was and all she accomplished in her life. And I kind of just want to sit down, own a copy of this, read it through, take it in and just have that. I think it's important. So that is number 12 on my list. 13 is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And this is another book that is super famous, everyone knows about, everyone talks about, that I've never read. And I think it's so weird that I've never read this book because people who consider themselves to be non-readers have read this book. You know, people that don't read often or they don't like reading, they've read this book and they've said it's changed their lives and it's opened up their eyes to, you know, another like mindset and another way of life and you know yada 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 so I kind of want to see what this book is all about I see it everywhere every time I go to the bookstore there's giant displays of the alchemist copy after copy there's so many different editions and I finally just want to join the group of people who have read this book and understand what's going on so I feel like I am very much left out of this special club that everyone is a part of so I finally want to read it in 2018. 14 on my list is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Now this book came out this year I believe and I almost pre-ordered it. I'm so mad that I didn't and I'm just like kicking myself. It was actually on the finalist list for the Goodreads Awards for I think fantasy if, if I believe if I'm not mistaken and I've been intri I was intrigued with it since I saw that it was coming out and I'm so Sorry, my camera died, story of my life. But uh, The Bear and the Nightingale, I was actually trying to pull up the synopsis because I don't remember. I don't remember what the book is about, but I do remember it being fascinating. Okay, so apparently it's a part of a trilogy and this is book one in the Winter Night Trilogy. People are loving it. Ugh, why didn't I pre-order this? I'm so mad. Okay, at the edge of the Russian wilderness, winter lasts most of the year and the snowdrifts grow taller than houses. But the these names. Asalisa doesn't mind. She spends the winter nights huddled around the embers of a fire with her beloved siblings listening to her nurse's fairy tales. Above all, she loves a chilling story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon who appears in the frigid night to claim unwary souls. Wise Russians fear him, her nurse says, and honor the spirits of house and yard and forest that protects their home from evil. After Vasilisa's mother dies, her father goes to Moscow and brings home a new wife. Mmm, getting Cinderella vibes. Fiercely devout, city-bred, Vasilisa's new stepmother forbids her family from honoring the household spirits. The family acquiesces, but Vasilisa is frightened, sensing that more hinges upon their rituals than anyone knows. And indeed, crops begin to fail. Evil creatures of the forest creep near, and misfortune stalks the village. All the while, the stepmother grows even harsher in her determination to groom her rebellious stepdaughter for either marriage or confinement in a convent. As danger circles, Vasilisa, is this really her name? Someone help me. <laughs> Must defy even the people she loves and call on dangerous gifts she has long concealed in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most frightening tales. Okay, wow, yeah, wow. I need to get my hands on this one ASAP. All right, number 15 on my list is by one of my favorite authors, and this book is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. I cannot believe I do not own this book. I have almost purchased it numerous times. There's an edition on the book depository that I've had my eye on for like a few years now. So I'm excited to have it on the list because now I have an excuse to take that plunge and press purchase. <laughs> I love James Baldwin's writing. I love him as a person, as a political figure. He is just life. I adore him and I encourage all of you to go check out his works. He's brilliant. The funny thing is I've actually read like the first three or four chapters of this novel a couple years ago and I don't remember why I didn't follow through. I think that I borrowed the book from the library and I had to return it and I never just made my way back to it to finish it but I remember the premise somewhat and it's basically the story is told through the eyes of a 14 year old boy 
young black boy growing up in Harlem and his abusive stepfather is also the pastor of a Pentecostal church and it's basically just like the family dynamics he's coming into his own and he's kind of has this pressure put on him by everyone in his community that he's going to be a great pastor and a preacher just like his stepfather and it's kind of like what goes on behind closed doors because obviously the congregation is not aware that he is in an abusive home and you know he's basically coming into his own and it's him discovering his sexuality and just all the things that go along with growing up as a young black boy in Harlem and I think I want to say I'm not sure what time period this is I want to say it's the 60s I'm not 100% sure but I'm really excited to read this finally and make it past chapter 4 Number 16 on my list is Bel Canto by Ann Patchett and this one I put it on my Amazon cart a while ago and then I removed it and I don't remember why maybe I had to buy something else and I just you know, had to prioritize my funds. In an unnamed South American country, a world-renowned soprano sings at a birthday party in honor of a visiting Japanese industrial titan. Alas, in the opening sequence, a ragtag band of 18 terrorists enters the vice presidential mansion through the air conditioning ducts. Their quarry is the president who has unfortunately stayed home to watch a favorite soap opera. And thus, from the beginning, things go awry. Among the hostages are Russian, Italian, and French diplomatic types. Swiss Red Cross negotiator Ocha Messner comes and goes, wrangling over terms and demands. Days stretch into weeks, the weeks into months. Joined by no common language except music, the 58 international hostages and their captors forge unexpected bonds. Time stands still, priorities rearrange themselves. Ultimately, of course, something has to give. Hearing opera sung live for the first time, a young priest reflects. Never had he thought, never once, that such a woman existed, one who stood so close to God that God's own voice poured from her. How far she must have gone inside herself to call up that voice. It was as if the voice came from the center part of the earth, and by the sheer effort and diligence of her will, she had pulled it up through the dirt and rock and through the floorboards of the house up into her feet, where it pulled through her, reaching, lifting, warmed by her, and then out of the white lily of her throat and straight to God in heaven. So that was just the book description on Goodreads. So it sounds very fascinating. I cannot wait to get into it. Number 17 on my list is A History of Love by Nicole Kraus or Kraus? Not sure. 14 year old Alma Singer is trying to find a cure for her mother's loneliness. Believing she might discover in an old book her mother is lovingly translating, she sets out in search of its author. Across New York, an old man called Leo Gursky is trying to survive a little bit longer. He spends his days dreaming of the lost love who 60 years ago in Poland inspired him to write the book. And although he doesn't know it yet, that book also survived, crossing oceans and generations and changing lives. So it sounds really intriguing, the story of this 14-year-old girl who's trying to cure her mother's loneliness and just trying to help her while she's also translating this book. And then you kind of have the other side, the author of the book, who is this old man who is kind of suffering for lost love and doesn't know that his book has survived all of these years and is pining away for the woman who inspired him writing this book. So I'm really excited to see where this story takes me. I've heard mixed things. Some people love it, some are kind of like, oh. Some people say it's confusing. I think it might be confusing for those who are unfamiliar with literature. So I'm really excited to dive back into that world. And by literature, I mean more literary books. So don't want to confuse that. Last but not least, number 17 on my list is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. Now this book has magical realism, lyrical prose, and the pain and passion of human love haunt this hypnotic generational saga. Foolish love appears to be the Rook family birthright, an ominous forecast for its most recent progeny, Ava Lavender. Ava, in all other ways a normal girl, is born with the wings of a bird. I cannot wait. In a quest to understand her peculiar disposition and a growing desire to fit in with her peers, 16-year-old Ava ventures into the wider world, ill-prepared for what she might discover, and naive to the twisted motives of others. Others like the pious Nathaniel Sorrows, who mistakes Ava for an angel and whose obsession with her grows until the night of the summer solstice celebrations. That night, the skies open up, rain and feathers fill the air, and Ava's quest and her family saga build to a devastating crescendo. 
First-time author Leslie Walton has constructed a layered and unforgettable mythology of what it means to be born with hearts that are tragically, exquisitely human. So this book has been on my radar for a couple of years now and I have been intrigued by it. I remember everyone talking about it here on booktube for a while and I just kind of missed the boat on that but I cannot wait to finally get my hands on it in 2018 and find out for myself what it's all about. So there we go. Those are the top 18 books I want to read in 2018. I cannot wait to share my reading journey with all of you and let you know my thoughts on all of these books. I hope I get to all of them. Definitely let me know in the comments what books you guys are putting on your TBR for 2018. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye! Discussion videos of them here on my channel. Um, these are my favorite books and I think it's sad that I don't have any videos discussing them and I think it's because I started booktube after I'd already read all of the novels. I read them growing up as a kid and 